Hey, it's Jake and Richie we're here for another episode of the Sonic Builders Club. This time we're going to show you how to take 3D printer parts, get them to fly up to 75 feet, and come down with a parachute. This is Sonic Dad Project number 80, the Sonic Parachute Ball Mark II. Let's do it. This parachute ball works on a different principle than the first one. It has elastics on the hinge, and that's what opens the ball at Apogee. But you have to have a way to keep the ball closed until it gets there, and that's where this design is really cool. So the lanyard is hooked to one side of the ball, and there's a hook on the other side. So to keep it closed, this lanyard gets looped around that hook like that. So the ball stays closed, and what happens is the drag on, on this line um, as the ball is going up will keep it closed and when it gets to Apogee then the uh, spring force of the elastics overcome the drag on this line and it opens. That's how it works. Let's head to the workbench show you how to make it. For this project you'll need a few materials, a plastic tablecloth, the color of your choice, I kind of like checkered, you'll need some black nylon cord, some kite string or size three crochet thread works well too. You'll need some fasteners of various sizes and they will be listed in the instructions. You'll also need some small rubber band. Now as far as tools and supplies go, you'll need a pair of pliers, a size one Phillips screwdriver, sharp scissors, a permanent marker, and some three quarter inch wide clear tape. Of course, you'll also need the 3D printed parts. If you have a printer like this one, in the PDF instructions, I'll give you the recommended printer settings, as well as a link to download the SDL files. Now, if you don't have a printer, you can find access to one in a lot of ways. Many local libraries have them, almost all high schools have them, and a lot of maker spaces. At the end of this video, I'll give you a link to our online store where you can find our kit that has all of the pieces you need to build this project. I've got all my parts laid out here. We're going to start with the housing that has the hole in the flange right here. And we'll take one of the retainer rings and we'll put it inside the housing. You'll notice there are three notches around this ring and there are three tabs in the housing. What we'll do is just line those up, just like that. I'm gonna hold it in place, turn the housing over. And there's also one notch in housing on this side and that corresponds to this cap that has one tab. And we'll just slip that cap in there like that and flip it over. Now we'll set it on our work surface for the next step. Now I can put my sheet metal screws in each one of the holes. And I'm gonna use a number one Phillips screwdriver to start each one. And what I'm gonna do is just go in a pattern and tighten them up. Now we want these just snug. We don't wanna over tighten them and strip the plastic out. And that's just right. Now for the cap piece that has the two tabs and the hole in the center, we're going to install the screw eye, put that right into the hole, and then using a pair of pliers, we're gonna twist that until we can't see the threads anymore. Right about there. And we'll take our little metal clasp and attach it to the screw eye like that. Now we can install this cap in the housing. Our next step is to attach the hinge to each housing. I designed this housing with hex nut sockets, so you can just drop the hex nut in there and they won't turn as you tighten the fastener. And I'll hold the hinge in position and then slide the screw through, aligning both of those holes. I'm going to just I'm just going to start this with my screwdriver. I don't want to tighten it yet because I need to put the second screw in. I'll drop that hex nut in, hold it in place, and we'll put the second screw in. Get this one started, and actually, we can snug this one right up, and then the second one. There we go. Now we'll attach the second hinge to the other housing following the same steps. Now I can take my two housing pieces and line the hinges up like that. 
and then take my hinge fastener and push it through just the first two knuckles like that. And I can hold this spacer in place on the center line of the screw and push the screw through. Now we'll take the locking hex nut and thread that on as far as it will go. Then I can hold on to that with pliers while I finish threading it on. And we don't want to tighten this. We're going to thread that hex nut on until there's just a slight gap in here. We want to make sure this hinge opens freely and that looks really good. Now I can attach my three elastic bands and there's a small slot on the bottom of each hook and I'm just going to pull on that elastic until it drops in there and then the same on the other side. So there's the first one and we'll attach the remaining two in the same way. Pretty easy. For the next step we'll need a piece of this black nylon cord cut to 20 inches long. Now we can take one end of our black nylon cord and thread it through the hole in the housing. Make sure that you thread it this way so the knot will be on the back side. Now I can take the cord and just put a knot in it. I'm using tarred nylon cord and that just means that knots stay in the cord better so I can get away with a single knot. I'm going to put that in there and then just give it a good firm pull and make sure it's not going to slip. And we can do the same thing with the other end with our handle. And I'm going to thread that cord through from this side because I want the knot here. Set that down, tie a knot in it, and we will give that a good pull. Looks good. For our parachute canopy, we'll need a piece of tablecloth 30 inches square. This happens to be 30 inches wide, so all I have to do is cut the length. Now we'll fold this piece in half, lining up the edges, and then we'll fold it in half again. And I want all four of the loose corners on the left side, like this. Make sure the edges of these four layers are lined up as closely as you can get them. And then if you're using a solid color tablecloth, you'll want to measure and mark a line six inches from each edge so that you have a square cut line. Now, since this checker tablecloth is an inch and a half per square, all I have to do is count over four squares from each edge and I've got my cut line. It's kind of handy. Now we'll hold the four layers tightly together and cut out the corner. When you unfold your canopy, you should have all four corners cut out. With the inside of the canopy facing up on my work surface, I'm going to cut off a three inch long piece of tape, and this is three quarter inches wide. What I'm gonna do is attach it halfway on the canopy and an inch and a half from the bottom. And then I'm gonna bring the other edge of the cutout around, and line the edges up on the side and the bottom, and stick them together. There we go. Okay, and then with the extra tape hanging off at the bottom, I'm gonna wrap that around to the front of the canopy. Just like that. And we're gonna push that really firmly and make sure that tape sticks well. Now with the canopy flipped over, I'm gonna cut off about a two inch long piece. And I'm gonna attach this one crossways, even with the top edge of the tape. This will be a reinforcing piece. Stick that on and push it on firmly. So with the four corners of our canopy taped up, it's time to cut our shroud lines. You can use kite string for this or size three crochet thread. So cut two lengths, 43 inches long. With a black marker, we're going to measure over an inch and a half and make a mark on both shroud lines. And then we'll flip them around and do the other side. I've got the canopy laid out with the inside facing up and I've got a tape seam right here and here's one end of my shroud line. I'm gonna cut off a piece of tape about two inches long and I'm gonna pick up the string with the tape with the bottom edge right on the mark. Then I'm gonna take it up to the parachute and with the bottom edge of the tape about a sixteenth of an inch away from the bottom edge of the canopy, I'm going to stick it right on that seam. And then what we're gonna do is fold this string over, cut off another piece of tape, 
and will tape on top of this folded string and that's going to reinforce the line and make it very difficult for that string to pull out. Now what we'll do is the other end of this same shroud line will tape to an adjacent corner. Now we need to find the center of each shroud line so we can tie a knot in the end to attach it to the ball. So what I'm going to do is take two of the edges of the parachute where the same shroud line mount and I'm going to line those edges up exactly like that. Then I'm going to carefully stretch this shroud line out and there you can see I found the center. So now what I'm going to do is tie a knot in the end without losing that center position. And what I want to see is a loop about an inch long on the end there. And then I can just pull that knot that nice and tight. And we'll do the same on the other shroud line. Bring these mounts together. Stretch this out. There's the center. And tie a nice little knot. About one inch from the end. There we go. Okay. Now we've got a knot in the end of each shroud line. It's ready to attach to the ball. We want to make sure we don't have any twists or tangles in our shroud line. And holding the end of it, we're going to attach it to the metal hook. And what I'm going to do is just loop it over like that and then pull it. It's that easy. And we'll do the other one. Well, this parachute ball is ready to fly. So let's go have some fun. Okay, we found a large grassy area. This is a little football stadium. We're here with my nephew, Ender. What's your name? Benson. And who's your dad? Here, here. Am I your dad? That's Sonic Jake. He's your dad, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to have some fun uh, with these guys throwing these parachute balls. Should we get going? Can you give them a thumbs up? Yeah, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay, thumbs let's up. do it. Okay, let's pack it. First thing I'm going to do is get the air out of it and then fold it in half. And then I'm going to roll it really tightly, like a sleeping bag, as tight as possible. We want this to be as small as we can get it. And then I'm uh, gonna roll one and a half to two turns of the shroud line. That's for a kind of a low altitude deployment if maybe a younger child were throwing it. If you want the highest altitude deployment, then go ahead and roll it all the way up. And it's important to roll and not twist the lines around. And then, Put it inside the parachute ball, close it up, and we want to pull the lanyard out to the side and then up on the hook like that. Yeah. Say up, up, and away. Up, up, and away. Whoa! To launch it, I like to do a swing back, and then on the forward swing is when I'm going to launch it. So I'm going to swing it forward as hard as I can, and when it's at the top, then I'll let go. So something like this. Hey, one nice feature about this project is we have a little clasp here. If you get your shroud lines tangled up, it's really easy to disconnect the chute like this. Separate the shroud lines back out, get the twists out, and then hook them right back onto the clip. And then you're ready to go. All right, so what we have here is a toddler special. This is pretty <laughs> common. <laughs> One of the reasons why the lanyard is black is specifically to make the untangling process a little bit easier. And this, this one is actually one of the more tangled yeah, messes we've had. So this is where the detachable clasp comes in real handy because you can just... That one got a lot of love. Yes, it did. Yes, it did.
ready. We're gonna put it inside the ball. And I need you to help me close it. Can you close that side up? Close it right up. Awesome. Now watch this trick. Take the string around like that and it stays closed. Ready to launch? Okay, let's do it. Good job! You caught it! I've got an altimeter in this one and I just broke my record. 77 feet. It does say 77. And then it says 100%, I think meaning 100% awesome. Yes, that's pretty cool. it must be. Well done, Richie. 77 feet. Someone's been eating his Wheaties. This should be an Olympic event, I think. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this Sonic Builders Club. Click the link below for the PDF instructions, the STL files for the 3D printed parts, or a link to our store where you can find the kit. And we'll see you guys next time. See you later. Hi. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right. Hey guys, it's Jake Ritchie, and we've got a special visitor today. This is Benson, and we are here to do a <laughs> monster truck on the head project. <laughs> Yeah, good job. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing, click here to subscribe to our channel. Or click here to visit our website.